Sicily. On this episode of You, Me, and Sicily, we're going to take you to one of our favorite spots on this entire island, Siracusa. Not only are the sites spectacular, but this city played a pivotal role throughout history, Alfred. The course of Western civilization wouldn't be the same today if it wasn't for folks like Gelone or Jellion and him stopping the uh, Phoenicians going to help the Persians back in Greece. Yes, and then of course the Athenians came. Profoundly important area. We're going to take you to Syracuse and show you why this is a must stop on your visit to Sicily. For centuries, these waters were the site of bloody battles as one conqueror after another tried to take one of the most prized possessions in the Mediterranean, Syracusa. Located on the southeast coast of Sicily, at one point was one of the wealthiest, most powerful and influential cities of antiquity in Magna Grecia, or Greater Greece, a formidable competitor of Athens, Carthage, and Rome. Colonists from Corinth founded in 734 BC, first landing in Ortigia, a small but strategically important island, and later expanded to what is today Syracusa. Described by Cicero as the greatest Greek city and the most beautiful of them all, Syracusa was ruled mostly by tyrants. Two of the most famous were Gelion and Dionysius. Ortigia, where most of the historical sites are located, is a magnificent blend of the ancient city both above and below the ground. Today, with its lively atmosphere, shops, restaurants and boutiques, it's a must visit when in Sicily. The Piazza del Duomo is an elegant square where locals and visitors spend hours marveling at the sights inside and out. The main Duomo or cathedral has quite a story. Some experts have concluded that at least two earlier temples stood here before the Greeks built the Doric temple dedicated to Athena, including one built by the original settlers as early as 1100 BC. It was later used by the Romans, incorporated into a Christian building, and later a cathedral. The Byzantine decorations are thanks to the Normans, and it was even used as a mosque by the Muslims. Next to the Duomo is an entrance to a spectacular series of underground tunnels dating back to the Greek period. The rock cutout passages were used for a way to distribute fresh water to wells throughout the city. It was expanded by the Spanish, then left unused until World War II. The pictures on the walls tell the story of how families used the tunnels as a refuge from bombings. Syracusa was bombed by both the Germans and the Allies. Our expert explained how the statue of Santa Lucia, Syracuse's patron saint, was hidden from the Germans during this period. As we wandered through the tunnels, we wondered if they would go on forever. But we soon hit a door that opened to the waterfront, and we marveled at this ancient engineering feat. A place which, is, which recounts the history of Syracuse, starting from the Hellenistic age until to the World War II. So, I mean, it's a sort of storytelling inscribed into the rock underground. The Fonte Aratusa, with its fresh water spring leading into the sea, dug swimming inside, surrounded by trees hundreds of years old, has been a source of inspiration for writers, poets, and musicians since ancient times. In ancient Greek myth, the nymph Aratusa was transformed by the goddess Artemis into a spring to escape the stalking sea god Alpheus. He was in turn transformed into a river by Zeus and succeeded in this way by finally mixing his waters with that of Artusha. The Temple of Apollo, built in the 6th century BC, is the most ancient Doric temple in Sicily. It too underwent several transformations, including being used as a Byzantine church and even an Islamic mosque during the Emirate of Sicily. For ancient history buffs, there's an archaeological park with several notable sites in the main city of Syracusa. 
We spend half a day just walking through the windy, sometimes hilly, but incredibly green pathways filled with sandstone and volcanic rocks. The highlight is this 5th century built Greek theater where performances were held for centuries. Tragedies, epic dramas, and mythology all played out on this stage. Characteristic of Greek theaters is to build them to include spectacular panoramic views. This one of the Pei and Ortigia. Originally, there were 67 rows, making it one of the largest in the Greek Empire. The Romans later renovated it to make better use of its acoustics and added gladiator battles and games. The Romans also constructed these artificial caves that were used like porches, one with even a fountain of natural water. Model of scenography of the, uh, Greece theater. The Greek tunnels back in Ortigia has a small display about the Greek theater. And very important to keep history alive. È veramente importante, anche perché la storia del teatro greco di Siracusa è la storia del più antico teatro in pietra del mondo. Yes, it's really important because this is not the history of Syracuse, but the history of the ancient theater in the Greek Western uh, world. And so it's the first theater which has been built, carved out from the rock uh, in the 5th century BC. And uh, there are uh, no um, par comparing the sites like that in the world. Spectacular. One of the most remarkable things in this park is a man made grotto dubbed by the famous painter Caravaggio, the ear of Dionysius, either because of its pointy shape like ear or its remarkable acoustics. You can stand at one end and hear a whisper spoken at the other end. The tyrant Dionysius' name enters the picture from a local legend that says he used the cave as a prison and its acoustics to spy on his captives. Another local legend is that Syracuse's most famous son, Archimedes, considered one of the greatest mathematicians, engineers, inventors of ancient antiquity, was buried in this cave. You may know him by the infamous cry of Eureka, Greek for I have found it, when he discovered the theory of density and volume while taking a bath. The remains of a 4th century BC Roman amphitheater, once the second largest in Italy, is just a few minutes from the Greek theater. Syracusans held bloody gladiator fights and battles using animals, offering a different type of performance. Siracusa, strategically once one of the most important cities in antiquity. Today, breathtakingly beautiful, rich with history, and steeped in culture. That ear of Dionysius, very cool. I whispered and someone could hear me on the other end. What did you say? <laughs> no, seriously, Archimedes is my favorite character. I mean, he was a mathematician, a scientist, he led uh, the defense of Setacusa from the ancient Romans. Uh, many people in Setacusa have contributed mightily, in my opinion, to Western civilization. Great city and a must stop when in Sicily. And if you've enjoyed this episode of You, Me and Sicily, check out all the other ones at evazmediagroup.com. We're also on Facebook, You, Me and Sicily. Thanks for watching. Ciao. Ciao.